जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन बल गिरी पर गोपी जन बल गिरी पर यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजना या मुन तेरा वन या मन तेरा वन जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी चन बाल गिरी पर गोपी चन बाल गिरी पर यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुन तेरा वन मुन तेरा वन जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राज माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी चन बाल गिरी पर गोपी चन बाल गिरी पर
ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜನರಂಜನ ಯಾಮುನ ಥೇರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಯಾಮುನ ಥೇರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 
कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे गौर हरि भो हरि भो हरि भो मिट्टा गौर हरि भो जाय जाय प्रभु पार प्रभु पार प्रभु पाचाय जाय प्रभु पार प्रेम नंदे जाय ओम विष्णु पाद परम हंस परिव्रज आचार्य अष्टर सत श्री श्रीमद His divine grace, say, see, Bhakti Vidyan Swami, Shrila Prabhu Pad ki, Iskon Samstapaka Charya Shrila Prabhu Pad ki, Nitya Lila Pravista Om Vishnu Pad Shrila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Shrila Prabhu Pad ki, Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrinda ki, Nama Charya Shrila Hari Das Thakur ki, Prem Shri Kaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasa De Gaur Bhakta Vinda Ki Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopagopina Shyam Kun Radha Kun Giri Govardhan Ki Vrindavan Maya Purdam Ki Ganga Maya Yamuna Maya Ki Tosi Maharani Bhakti Devi Ki Yuga Dharma Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki All glories assemble devotees all glories assemble devotees all glories assemble devotees all glories shri guru shri goranga all glories shri prabhu pad nama om vishnu padaya krishna pristaya bhutale shrimati bhakti vedanta swamin iti namane Namaste Saraswati Devi Goravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Desha Tarine Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jai Anandananda Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jai Anandananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaur Bhakta Vinda Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaur Bhakta Vinda Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaur Bhakta Vinda So we're speaking about the associates of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates, they're one and different. The associates of Ch Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu show us the mood of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We can understand the qualities of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from his associates. There's a common saying, birds of a feather flock together. We don't see the crows with any other birds but crows. And similarly, the swans, they're always with the swans. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is with the devotees. And the devotees, they're reflecting all the qualities of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Prabhupada was very concerned that all of the members of our society, the ISKCON society, would show the good qualities of devotees. Because Prabhupada knew that whatever behavior, whatever way we behave to the public, it will reflect on Srila Prabhupada. So Srila Prabhupada was very concerned to, that all the devotees would be of very good character. Yashyasti bhaktir bhagavati akinshina sarvair gunaristatra samase asuraha harava bhaktashya kato mahadgana manoratain asati bhavato bahi. So it is stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam that one who is the devotee of the Lord will have all the good qualities of the demigods. And those who are not devotees, even though they may be very expert in maintaining their families, or they may even be very expert in the mystic yoga process, but if they are not devotees, they have no good qualities. So it's very important for us to therefore learn what are the, what is the behavior, what are the characteristics of these associates of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we do like to speak on these different associates in terms of their different appearances and disappearance days. Of course, sometimes we're so busy in the course of our preaching work that we overlook these important dates. So I thought for the Shravan Utsav it would be nice to reflect on some of the devotees who were very intimately connected with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and who displayed the, the most very special qualities of pure devotees. One of the, of course, one of the most intimate associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was Gadarhar Pandit. Srila Gadarhar Pandit, uh, he took birth in Bangladesh and as a young man, his family moved to Navadvip. Gadarhar Pandit has also a young brother. Brother's name is Vani Nath. When we go to Champahati, we see the wonderful deities of Gaur Gadarhar. And it said these deities were the deities originally worshipped by Vani Nath, who was the younger brother of Gadarhar Pandit. It was His Divine Grace, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Thakur Prabhupada, who reclaimed these Gorgadarhar deities and established them there at Champahati for the glory of all the devotees. And every year when we go on the Navadvip Parikrama, we always go to visit Champahati and to have darshan of these very merciful deities, Gore and Gadarhar. So 
So we want to understand what is the tattva of Gadarhar Pandit. It is said that uh, the Queen of Braja, namely Srimati Radharani, that she appeared in the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as Gadarhar Pandit. And along with Srimati Radharani, her very intimate friend Lalita Saki also appeared. Lalita Saki is sometimes called Anuradha because she's very intimately connected with Srimati Radharani. So when Srimati Radharani entered as appears in Goranga's pastimes, Lalita Saki entered along with Srimati Radharani into the body of that personality who we call Gadarhar Pandit. Gadarhar Pandit is one of the energies of the Lord. We are worshipping in our temple Panchatattva. Panchatattva, five truths. These five personalities are one and different. They appear in different modes, in different forms, because the Lord likes to enjoy pleasure in different rasas. We offer our respects to the five deities, Panchatattva Makam Krishnam, Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam, Bhakta Avataram Bhaktakyam, Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam. These five different personalities are all the energy of the Lord. We have, first of all, the Lord as the devotee, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then we have Bhakta Swarupa, who is Nityananda, and Bhakta Avatar, Advaita Acharya. We have Bhakta Shakti, which is Gadahar Pandit, and we have Srivas, the devotee, devotional energy. So five truths. They're one. They're all different manifestations of the Lord because the Lord likes to enjoy different rasas, different tastes. And therefore, he appears in these five different forms. We see that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the course of his pastimes, he had two wives. So sometimes devotees are a little puzzled that if Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted these wives, are they Radharani? Sometimes people think maybe one of maybe one of the wives is Radharani, or maybe they're both Srimati Radharani. But we have to understand that sometimes Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would manifest himself in the mood of Narayan and sometimes in the mood of Lord Krishna. In the mood of Narayan, then he has the two wives. First, there was Lakshmi Priya, first Vishnu, Vishnu Priya, then La Lakshmi Priya. And like that, two wives, uh, they are his shak the Shaktis of Lord Narayan. And when the Lord is in the mood of Lord Krishna, then his Shakti is Gadarhar Pandit. So it's Gadarhar Pandit who is the energy of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he enjoys the most intimate association with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Gadarhar Pandit was very renounced throughout his life. 
he was a, a lifetime brahmachari. He, he was so renounced that he attracted the attention of Sri Ishwara Puripad. Ishwara Puripad, who later on became the spiritual master of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was visiting Mayapur and he saw Gadarhar Pandit and he saw his mood of renunciation, he was very attracted to him. And he was so appreciative of his renounced mood, of his mood as a brahmacharya, that, that Ishwara Puri taught him his own book, which he'd written, which was called Krishna Lilamrita. And Gadarha Pandit heard from the mouth of Ishwara Puri the topics of Lord Krishna and the, the message of Lord Krishna directly from Sri Ishwara Puri. Of course, Ishwara Puri is one of the disciples of Madhavendra Puri. It is said Madhavendra Puri had two very prominent, very great disciples. One was Ishwara Puri and the other was Sri Advaita Acharya. They were both disciples of Madhavendra Puri. And because of Madhavendra Puri, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was attracted to Ishwara Puri. He wanted to be connected into that line of ecstatic love for Krishna. So Srila Gadarhar Pandit grew up there in Navadweep and as a young child he was always devoted to Lord Krishna and he would associate with devotees. However, we know that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as a young boy he was uh, known as Nimai Pandit and he would be in his pastimes of scholarship and he was known to be a great debater of logic. He was so powerful in debate. Of course, we know that he met with Digvijay, Keshava Kashmiri, and he defeated him. So the, the devotees, those who were the Vaishnavas in Navadvip, they would just run away if they saw Nimai Pandit come because he thought, if we confront Nimai, he will want to debate with us. It will be very difficult. We can never defeat him. He always defeats us. And so the devotees were just running when they saw Nimai Pandit come and go, quick, go the other way. Turn around, go back, or go the, go the other way. They just wanted to avoid meeting him because whenever Nimai would meet the devotees, he would challenge them. So one day, he met with Gadarhar Pandit and he immediately said to Gadarhar Pandit, what is the definition of liberation? You are a great devotee, Gadarhar. You tell me, what is the definition of liberation? So Gadarhar, he quoted from Nyaya Shastra, Shastras on logic, he quoted that liberation means to end all miseries. But Nimai Pandit took that definition and showed that it was inadequate. He refuted it. The devotees who were listening, because when they saw that Gadarhar was debating with Nimai Pandit, they came to hear what, what they're going to do, what's going to happen. They wanted to hear. And when they came and they heard Nimai Pandit defeat Gadarhar Pandit, they were all thinking, oh, how wonderful. If only this Nimai Pandit could become a devotee, wouldn't it be so nice? Just like sometimes we see people, young people, and we think, oh, that 
that devotee, that person, they're so talented, they're so educated, they're so scholarly, they're so cultured. If only they could be a devotee. If they're not devotees, then what is the good? It's all zeros. So many zeros. Prabhupada used to talk about, if I give you the check with zero, 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 then you won't get any money from the bank. It's not going to help you pay the bills. It's no good, right? But if you put a one in front of all the zeros, then very nice, then it's one lakh, then it's one crore, then it's a hundred crores. Oh, wonderful. It's just what we want. But if there's nothing there, all the good qualities are useless without Krishna consciousness. So they were thinking, if only Nimai Pandit could become a devotee. So it happened that after some time, Lord Nimai Pandit's father, Jagannath Mishra, left the world. And after he left the world, Nimai Pandit decided that he wanted to go to Gaya and do the last rites on behalf of his father. But actually, that was only the external reason for him going to Gaya. His inner mood was that I will go to Gaya and I will get, I will meet with Ishwara Puri and I will accept Diksha Mantra initiation from him. And that's what happened. Lord Chaitanya went there to Gaya and he met with Ishwara Puri and Ishwara Puri initiated him as his disciple. So after being initiated by Ishwara Puri, then Lord Chaitanya came back and he went, he stopped at Kanai Natsala. Of course we have a very wonderful ISKCON center there at Kanai Natsala, a very, very special holy place. And Lord Chaitanya was there and he had very mystical experiences there. He actually saw Krishna and Krishna appeared to him and he was looking for Krishna and he saw Krishna. So when he came back to Mayapur, his ecstatic love for Krishna had awoken to a very high level. And this was observed by some of the devotees. Particularly the first one to notice was a devotee called Sri, Sri Ram Pandit. Sriman Pandit. He observed Lord Chaitanya's ecstatic love for Krishna. And he told all the devotees that Nimai Pandit, he's changed. He's become a devotee. And all the devotees, they were all shocked. What? Really? Nimai Pandit? That per He's become a devotee? Really? Is it true? And they said, you have to come. You have to come and see. We're going to meet. You have to come to Suklambar Brahmachari's place. You will see for yourself. Tomorrow morning, you come to Suklambar Bar Brahmachari's place. Suklambra, Suklambar Brahmachari, very great devotee, Suklambar Brahmachari, he would live by begging and it describes how one day he cooked rice. Lord Chaitanya requested him to cook for him. Now Suklambar Brahmachari didn't have any wealth. If we thought the Lord is coming to my home today, we want to go out and get the best rice. But Suklambar Brahmachari, he, he would pick up the grains of rice in the street. He would pick up grains of rice from the fields. And he would cook food in this way. So his living style was very, very frugal, very simple. 
But Lord Chaitanya came there, and when Suklambert cooked for Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya said, I've never ever tasted such nectar. Such nectar. Why? Because you, you picked up that rice from the fields, and you picked it up from the street, and you washed it, and then you cooked it. It's so much, so it shows so much more love than the person who just goes to the store and purchases rice and cooks it. Srila Prabhupada encouraged us. He wanted us to grow our own food. He didn't like that we had to depend on others to produce our food. And when the devotees would say that Prabhupada, we grew these vegetables, this is all food which we grow ourselves, Prabhupada would be so pleased and he would appreciate more than anything else which you could purchase from the, from the store. And similarly, Lord Chaitanya relished the food of Raghunath Das Goswami. When Raghunath Das Goswami was right, residing in Jagannath Puri, he was collecting food from the drains and he was washing it and drying it and then taking it. And when Lord Chaitanya heard, he came there and he took some of that food and he tasted it and said, I've never tasted such nectar ever before. He tasted so much the love which was there in the food. So this is the qualification to please Krishna. Love, bhakti, there must be the genuine offering to the Lord. And that genuine offering comes from the heart. It doesn't just come from our, our wallet or from our money, but it comes from our heart. The, the deep effort to actually please the Lord by our efforts. So all the devotees came there to Suklambra Brahmachari's house and it happened that while they were there in the house, in, at the place of Suklambra, someone was reciting a beautiful verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. And when Lord Chaitanya Nimai Pandit came there, when he heard that verse, then his ecstatic love was again awakened and all the different ecstatic symptoms were manifest in his body. And when Gadahar Pandit saw how Lord Chaitanya was in so much ecstasy, Gadahar fainted. He could not believe that, oh, Nimai Pandits now awakened so much deep love for Lord Krishna. Gadahar couldn't maintain his consciousness. And then Lord Chaitanya came over to Gadarhar and revived him. And he told Gadarhar, he said, you know Gadarhar, you are so fortunate. He said, because from your very childhood, you've worshipped Lord Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya said, I have wasted my life. I wasted so much of my life in foolish activities, studying academic subjects, studying my logic and so many other useless things which have no value in relation to love of Krishna. I did not know the real value of the human form of life. But Gadarhar, you have shown me the perfect example because you have worshipped Krishna from your very childhood. So this was how Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed his appreciation to Gadarhar Pandit in the very beginning of their pastimes there, here in Navadweep. Later on, there was another important incident which took place that 
Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to Gadarhar and requested him, Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? I want to see Krishna. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had already seen Krishna in Kanai Natsala. And he was anxious to see Krishna again. And he came begging to Gadarhar, Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? And Gadarhar said, He's in your heart. It's all right. Don't worry. He's in your heart. But when Lord Chaitanya heard he's in the heart, Lord Chaitanya began to rip at his chest. And he wanted to tear open his heart. Because he said, he's in my heart. I want him. I want him. And he began to rip at his skin. And Mother Sachi was watching. Mother Sachi was very worried to see her son how he was tearing at his chest, trying to rip open his heart. But Gadarhar was just nearby, so Gadarhar took the hands of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and told him, Don't worry, be patient. Just now Lord Krishna is coming. Just be patient. Just now he is coming. So when Mother Sachi saw Gadarhar, how he was so expert in pacifying Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Later she came to Gadarhar Pandit and she thanked him for taking care of Lord Chaitanya. And she begged him, she requested him, please, you stay with my son. Wherever he goes, you should go with him and you can protect him and look after him. And actually, that's pretty much what happened. That many, many pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gadarha Pandit was also there. Just like, what were the wonderful pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Well, there was the Mahaprakash Lila at the home of Srivas Pandit. Gadarha Pandit was there. When Lord Chaitanya sat on the altar for 21 hours and gave blessings to everyone and told all the different devotees different things, different incidents which had taken place, which he knew about, which he'd taken part in, he revealed to them his divinity, how he knows everything. So that was a very important pastime the Mahaprakash at the home of Srivas Pandit. And then there was also the deliverance of the Chankazi. Again, Gadahar was there. Gadahar went with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It was Lord Chaitanya who spoke with the Chankazi. They had come with a big procession, many, many people, and they'd all come to protest because the Chankazi was stopping the Sankirtan. So Lord Chaitanya had organized the first civil disobedience movement. And he brought many, many devotees, lakhs of devotees, they all came and they all marched to the Chankazi's house. And then Lord Chaitanya spoke with the Chankazi and the Chankazi agreed that as long as myself or my descendants live, none of them will ever interfere in the Sankirtan movement. And even today, to this day, the Mohammedan people don't interfere in the Sankirtan movement of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And the Chankazi Samadhi is there. And every year we go there and visit the, the Samadhi of the Chankazi because he'd, he'd changed, he'd become a devotee, practically. So, that was an important pastime. And then, another, t another incident which took place was that the deliverance of Jagai and Madhai, after they'd been delivered, all the devotees went to take bath. <coughs> so, Gadarhar also went, he also went along with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then Lord Chaitanya took sannyas. 
he went to Katwa and he only told a few people and one of them was Gadarhar. So there was Gadarhar, there was Makunda and there was Lord Nityananda. They all went there to Katwa to be with Lord Chaitanya and to take and to see his sannyas ceremony. Then after Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, Lord Chaitanya is going to Jagannath Puri. Gadarhar goes with him. Gadarhar accompanied him all the time. They, he went there to Katwa, then they went to Shantipur, they spent some days in Shantipur, and then they went to Jagannath Puri, and Gadarhar went with him all the way. And when they're in Jagannath Puri, of course, they take part in the Snanyatra of Jagannath, and then they have the Rathi Atra festival, and oh, they had also the cleaning of the Gundicha temple, all of these different pastimes. Lord Chaitanya would be there, and Gadarhar would also be there. It is said, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the life and soul of Gadarhar Pandit. But it is also said, Lord Nityananda is the life and soul of Gadarhar Pandit. So, who is the life and soul of Lord Chaitanya? They're, they're both, both Gadarhar and Nityananda, they're deeply can, attached to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But we can see that Gadarhar had more association than even Lord Nityananda, because Lord Chaitanya sent Lord Nityananda back to Bengal to preach. And Lord Nityananda was coming every year for Rathiatra, but he was also sent back every year to preach in Bengal. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had requested him that you are the one to do it. It became his Prabhu Datta Desh. Prabhu Datta Desh, the place given by the Master. Right? You're given a place to preach by the spiritual Master. You take that place as your life and soul to go and preach. You dedicate your life to preaching in that place. So Lord Nityananda was preaching in Bengal. Of course he was also very intimate associate of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but Gadarhar is even more special because Gadarhar from his childhood he had been seeing Nimai Pandit, they grew up together. You can see the house of Gadarhar, it's not very far away from the yoga piece. And after Lord Chaitanya left home and took sannyas, Gadarhar followed him. Gadarhar also went to Jagannath Puri and Gadarhar became a Kshetra sannyas. Kshetra sannyas means they make a vow to stay in a holy place. That they will never leave that place, they will just stay there. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur considers Kshetra Sanyas to be the suitable means of uh, Vanaprastha in the Kali Yuga. He thought for most people that's good enough. To have them go as sannyasis, that's too much. But Kshetra Sanyas, they can be with their wife and they can stay there and they can be renounced, living in the holy place. And people like Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he was a Kshetra Sanyasi. He was living there in Jagannath Puri. He had his wife, he had his family there. His daughter was there, the son-in-law, they were all there in Jagannath Puri with him. That is Kshetra Sanyas. So Gadarhar, he'd also made this vow of Kshetra Sanyas. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had given Gadarhar one deity. This is the deity which we know as Tota Gopinath. 
Tota means the garden. So there's one garden there where the deity of Gopinath is established and it was there where Gadarhar Pandit performed the worship of Tota Gopinath. The deity was personally found by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and given by him to Gadarhar Pandit to worship. However, as Gadarhar got older, it became more difficult for him to put the different ornaments on the deity because to reach up, look up on the deity, the deity was quite big, the deity was up on a high path, so it was difficult for Gadarhar to reach up and to put the ornaments on the deity. So it is said that initially the deity was standing, but as Gadarhar aged, the deity sat down. And you can see the deity today that he is kneeling. He's like this, like just as I'm sitting on this chair with the legs folded, so the deity is also sitting like that. Very unusual. You don't see deity, many, any deity. I didn't see any other deities like that. But Tota Gopinath is in that position. And it is said that Tota Gopinath took that position in order to facilitate Gadarhar Pandit's worship of the deity. So, a wonderful pastime of Tota Gopinath. However, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, well, he would regularly come and associate with Gadarhar. There was one, there's one nice pastime described in Chaitanya Bhagwat. It describes how while Gadarhar was living at Tota Gopinath, they'd, they'd brought some very nice rice from Bengal. In Puri, you don't get such the good rice as you get here in Bengal. So they'd brought some very nice rice all the way from Navadweep. They'd taken it there to Jagannath Puri and they'd given some to Gadarhar Pandit to offer to the Gopinath deity. So Gadarhar Pandit invited Lord Nityananda to come and take prasad with him one day. And, Lord, and at that time he prepared that very nice rice for Lord Nityananda. And then he also took some of the, the vegetables which grew on his garden around there. Just very simple green leaves, you know, sak. Sak was a great favorite of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He liked so much to eat sak. Here in Mayapur we get a lot of sak. It's very nice. Very good to be able to get so many green leaves here as we do in Mayapur. So in Jagannath Puri, Gadarhar had picked some green leaves, tam tamarind leaves and different things to put with the rice. And Lord Nityananda came. And just as they were making the offering, at that time, Lord Chaitanya also came. So the three of them could all sit down together and relish prasadam. Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda and Gadarhar. And they were sitting, taking the prasad of Tota Gopina. Gadarhar Pandit was uh, so much attached to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that it came, when Lord Chaitanya, he desired to go to Vrindavan. After taking sannyas, actually, he wanted to go to Vrindavan. But Lord Nityananda had tricked him. And instead, he brought him to Shantipur. And there it was arranged, all the devotees would come from Mayapur, including Mother Sachi, and they would all come and they would see how Nimai Pandit was now a sannyasi. And that was a big program for several days in Shantipur at the home of Advaita Acharya. And at that time, Mother Sachi requested Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, don't go to Vrindavan. 
because if you go to Vrindavan, it's very far away and I will not get any news of your activities. And she suggested to her son, you just go to Jagannath Puri. If you can go to Jagannath Puri, it will be better. Because Jagannath Puri and Navadweep are like two rooms in the one house. Regularly people are coming and going between Jagannath Puri and Navadweep. So if you go and stay in Navadweep, it will be better for me. I will be able to get news of your activities. And in this way, I will not feel so much the pain of you taking sannyas and leaving home. Actually, Lord Chaitanya had told his mother, he said, well, I took sannyas. When I took sannyas, I, I, I was not in proper control of my mind and senses. I realized I shouldn't have done it. Now, I think if you want, I will just give it up and I will come home with you. But Mother Sachi said to him, oh, no, no, you better not do that. Because if you give up sannyas, that will be very bad. That will be very bad to give up your sannyas. People will never respect you if you do that. So please don't do that. Just keep your sannyas. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so, so willing to do whatever his mother wanted. But Mother Sachi, being herself a wonderful devotee, she gives the proper instruction to her son that don't give up sannyas. Now you've taken the sannyas, there's no going back. This is a different practice. If you look at Buddhist monks, for example, in Buddhism, the monks, they become a monk and then they can give up being a monk. They have a ceremony to become a monk and when they give up being a monk, they have a cer ceremony to give up being the monk. They go out and then if they want, they can come back and be a monk again. Another ceremony <laughs> and they'll be a monk for some time. And many young men, in Buddhist countries, many young men have that custom. The family want them to become a monk for a month or six months or a year. It's unusual for people to be a monk for a very long time. I was uh, traveling in a Buddhist country and I was doing some book distribution. So I didn't want to go and stay in hotels because hotels are really the mode of ignorance. So I thought I would go to the Buddhist temple and ask them for accommodation. Could, would they mind if I stay the night at their temple? So they saw I was in my robes as a monk and they asked me, how long have you been a monk? So when I told them how long I'd been a monk, they were, wow. Oh, they were just amazed, you know, they couldn't believe I'd been a monk for, because <laughs> I'd been a monk for, you know, since I was a very young man. So they were just amazed because all of them, they'd only, they'd been monks two years, maybe three years, you know, not very long. So it's a whole very different tradition, very different culture. So Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, there's no giving up, there's no going back. And Gadarha Pandit, he'd also taken sannyas. Gadarha Pandit Gosai, he'd taken Kshetra sannyas. So it happened that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to go to Vrindavan again. After he came back to Jagannath Puri, when he came to Jagannath Puri, he stayed there for some time and he delivered Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. And then he'd met also people like Ramananda Rai. So when they met Lord Chaitanya, they didn't want Lord Chaitanya to leave. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, Ramananda Rai, they were begging Lord Chaitanya, no, no, stay here in Puri, don't leave. But Lord Chaitanya was insisting, no, I must go, I want to go to Vrindavan, I have to go. So finally, they made arrangements that Lord Chaitanya would go to Vrindavan. 
But when Lord Chaitanya was going, Gadarhar said, I'm following you. And Lord Chaitanya would say, no, you cannot follow me. You cannot come with me. You are a Kshetra Sanyas. You've made a vow to stay here in Jagannath Puri. You cannot leave now. Gadarhar Pandit said to Lord Chaitanya, you are, wherever you go, that is Jagannath Puri. Lord Chaitanya uh, was not happy. Lord Chaitanya said, but you've made a vow to serve Gopinath. If you go, you're giving up your vow to serve Gopinath. Gadarhar Pandit replied, by seeing your lotus feet, I'm serving, the, I'm serving Gopinath millions of times, simply by the sight of your lotus feet. So, this was Gadarhar's mood. Lord Chaitanya was insistent, however. He said, look, you cannot be irresponsible. If you give up your vow, it will not be good. Gadarhar said, I will take the responsibility myself. You don't have to worry. It will be my responsibility. It's nothing to do with you. I'm giving up the vow, not you. I will take the responsibility. Lord Chaitanya was not happy. Anyway, Gadarhar said, I'm not following you. You go ahead. I'm not following you. But Gadarhar was walking behind. He said, I will go to Navadweep. I will see Mother Sachi like this. So at one point, they came out of Jagannath Puri and when they got as far as Katak, right? Those of you who know Arissa, you know the town of Katak there? Out of Jagannath Puri, and there's Bhubaneswar, and then a bit further on you come to Katak. So it was a long way from Jagannath Puri. So Lord Chaitanya called Gadarhar. Gadarhar had been walking behind and he called Gadarhar, come here. He said, you know, you've already given up your vow. You've broken the religious principles in two different ways. One way was Kshetra Sanyas. You've broken that vow. And the other way, you've given up the worship of Gopinath. So two ways you've broken the religious principles. He said, you are following me simply for your sense gratification. But your happiness is not my happiness. If you want to make me happy, you go back to Puri and take up the worship of Gopinath. And saying this, Lord Chaitanya then got in a boat and crossed the river. And Gadarhar just fainted. He just collapsed. And it was Sarvabhama Bhattacharya who was there with him. He had to revive him and take him back to Puri. So very difficult to understand the deep love and affection which was there between Lord Chaitanya and Gadarhar Pandit. Just like we see sometimes Lord Krishna joking with Rukmini. Lord Krishna will sometimes tease his different wives and they will react in different ways. When Lord Krishna told Rukmini, I'm too old for you or I'm not suitable for you, so many kings wanted to marry you, I'm only a cowherd boy, I don't even have any cows, I'm not fit to be your husband. Then Rukmini fainted, just the thought of her losing Krishna. She fainted. Satyabhama, on the other hand, she has a different mood and she will argue with Krishna. Different wives, different moods. Lord Krishna enjoys all of these different loving relationships with his devotees. So similarly, Lord Chaitanya was chastising Gadarhar Pandit and sending him back to Puri. Uh, there's an interesting pastime which also takes place with Gadarhar Pandit. 
and it is concerning giving initiation, mantra initiation. Gadarhar Pandit had approached Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he requested him. He said that, you know, I, I'm not getting any realization from my mantra anymore. I must have given mantra initiation to a faithless person. And because I've given initiation to a person who did not have proper faith, and because I told him the mantra, now my heart has become contaminated. And when I chant my mantra, I'm not getting any realization. And I've, it's almost like I've forgotten my mantra. So he asked Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, can you please give me reinitiation? Could you reinitiate me into the mantra? Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Oh, no, no, I cannot do that. What, and why not? Gadarhar said, said, Because you are initiated by Pundarik Vijanidi. You should get the mantra from your guru. I am not your Diksha guru. You don't get the mantra from any other guru. You only have one Diksha guru. So you get the mantra from your Diksha guru. And you hear from him. But then he said, oh, but my guru is not here. How will I get initiation from him? Lord Chaitanya told him, don't worry. Your guru is coming here very soon. <laughs> and it happened. A few weeks later, after this conversation, then uh, Pundarik Vijanidi did come there to Jagannath Puri. Actually, I didn't mention about Gadarhar's initiation, which took place initially in Mayapur. Uh, there was, it's also a wonderful pastime, because Pundarik Vijanidi, he comes from a place in Bangladesh, which is very near to the home of Vasudev and Makunda Datta. Now, Vasudev and Makunda Datta, you know them, they're both wonderful devotees and associates of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Vasudev Datta, he was, Lord Chaitanya said, you are Prahlad Maharaj, you're an incarnation of Prahlad Maharaj. Because it was Vasudev Datta who begged Lord Chaitanya that I want to take the sins of all the people and let, not only all the people, I want to take the sins of all living entities let them all be liberated and I will stay here and suffer for them. So when Vasudev Datta said like that to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu shed tears. He was so pleased that this, this, he said, it is not surprising that you have this mood because I know that you are not, you are Prahlad Maharaj. That you have that mode of compassion. And Lord Chaitanya described how it would happen. He said, those people, those sinful living entities, they will be freed of their sins. And the result will be, they will all become devotees. They will all become Vaishnavas in their next birth. And those who are Vaishnavas, they will become free of all their sins and they will all be liberated back to Godhead. This is the mercy of Vasudev Datta. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati describes in his purport that this is more mercy than Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ accepted the sins of his followers. But Vasudev Datta was infinitely more merciful than Lord Jesus. Because Vasudev Datta said, I will take the sins of all the living entities in the universe. Let them all be liberated. And I will take the sins. So he is the greatest, the topmost follower of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He has actually understood the mood of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
which is to deliver the fallen souls, even at our own sacrifice, to take on the sins of the others. Let us stay here and suffer and let them be liberated. That is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mood and that was shown by the wonderful character of Vasudev Datta. Lord Chaitanya gave the example how it's possible. Actually, he gave three examples. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's described there's a fruit tree called Udambara. And on the Udambara tree, there are millions of fruits. So if you lose one fruit from the Udambara tree, what is the loss? There's so many more fruits there. Why worry about one fruit? Or if you have a bag of mustard seed and you lose one mustard seed, you lose one tiny mustard seed from a bag of mustard seeds, it's not a big loss. It's nothing to cry about. You have a whole bag of mustard seeds. Why worry about one little seed? And the third example, you have a million Kamadenu cows. You have a herd of one million Kamadenu cows. And you lose one, you lose one goat. Are you going to worry about a goat when you've got a million Kamadenu cows? No, who cares about a goat? Useless. When you have cows, wonderful cows. So those three examples are all given in Chaitanya Charitamrita. In the same way Lord Chaitanya is describing to, do, to liberate the living entities in one universe. It's a very easy thing. Very easy thing for Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is the Supreme Lord. He can easily liberate all the living entities in the universe. And that was because that was the desire of Vasudev Datta. So Vasudev Datta and Makunda Datta, they're actually singers. You know, we know how Makunda would sing beautiful songs. For Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya liked so much to hear the singing of Makunda. So it happened that Makunda told Gadarhar that a great devotee is coming to Navadweep. I want you must come and meet him. And that devotee was described, Lord Chaitanya would call out, Pundarik, my father, Pundarik, my father. Devotees were all puzzled. Who is this Pundarik? Who is the father of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? So it happened, Pundarik Vijaniri came there to Mayapur and Makunda told Gadarhar, you must go and meet Pundarik Vijaniri. So Gadarhar is a renounced brahmachari. He goes to meet Pundarik Vijaniri. And he sees Pundarik Vijanidi. Now Pundarik Vijanidi is an unusual personality. And he disguised himself to look like a materialist. He looks like a sense gratifier. You know, he wore nice clothes. And he's chewing pan. And he had nice lace. And he had people fanning him. And on the table, you know, there's so much nice sherbets and numpkins, different things to eat. And Gadarhar a renounced brahmachari and he comes and sees Pundarik Vijanidi and he thinks, wow, he doesn't look like a great devotee. You know, he's, look at that, look at the guy, you know, so much sense gratification. He's like a Vishayi. He was actually thinking, Gadarha was thinking like this because he's got jewelry and rings, so many rings on the finger. He looked just like a materialist. And Gadarha is so renounced, brahmachari, you know, the old torn cloth, ragged cloth, he's a brahmachari. And there's Pundarik looking like a real materialist. And Gadarha's thinking, he's a devotee? Is he a devotee? He's not, he doesn't know. This is Pundarik 
Pundarik Vijayanidhi, he would play the part of a materialist just to fool people into thinking he was a materialist. Sometimes, you know, if you show people you're a devotee, they'll go, oh, 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 you're so pious, oh, you're so religious, you know. They don't want anything to do with you, keep away from you. So sometimes it's good to disguise yourself from being a devotee. Just like Prabhupada proved that we could go for book distribution. That some parts of the world it's not so convenient to distribute books if you go as a devotee. And he approved that the devotees could wear ordinary dress and could wear wigs even and go and distribute books. And that is confirmed in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. We see Maharaj Prataparudra. He disguised himself so he could go and meet with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and give service to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Pundarik Vijayaniti, he disguised himself as a materialist. And Makunda was there. Makunda, brother of Vasudev Datta, he was there. And he was watching and he could understand the mind of Gadarhar. The Gadarhar is doubtful. He's thinking Pundarik is not much of a devotee. So Makunda sang the beautiful verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. Aho bakistam kanakala kutam jagam sayapayanad api asadvi labegatinda tri uchitantananyam Write that verse. You know that verse from the third canto? Uddhava is speaking and he is describing to Vidura who could be more merciful than Lord Krishna that he accepted this putana although this whole baka baka means the, the sister of bakasura the sister of Bakasura, Putana. And Stana Kalakutam. Kalakutam. She's got this deadly poison on her stana, on her breast. And she's coming to offer her breast milk to Lord Krishna to poison him. But Lord Krishna accepts her and takes her back to Godhead to become one of his nurses in the spiritual world along with people like Ambika, the nurse of Lord Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan. So this, when this verse was chanted by Makunda, then the Pundarik Vijayanini's love for Krishna was awakened and he fell off his seat and he rolled on the ground and he shed tears and the whole floor became flooded in his tears and his body trembled, the hair stood on end, he was crying, he could not suppress his emotion, his deep love for Krishna which was awakened. So when Gadarhar saw that manifestation of love for Krishna, Gadarhar could understand Oh, oh, Pundarik Vijanidi is a great devotee. He is really, really a super great devotee. Actually, Pundarik Vijanidi was one of the very intimate friends of Swarup Damodar Goswami. And as I said, Lord Chaitanya used to call out Pundarik, my father, my father, because Pundarik in Krishna Leela is Maharaj Vrishabhanu, the father of Srimati Radharani. So Gadarhar Pandit understood that Pundarik Vijaniri was really a great devotee. He began to reflect in his mind his offense. He thought, I've been offensive to him. I have not properly honored him. I did not give him proper respect. I had doubts about him. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke to Gadarhar and he told Gadarhar, you know, it will be proper in this situation. 
you should accept initiation from Pundarik Vijanidi. Accept him as your spiritual master. So in this way, on a proper date, Pundarik Vijanidi accepted Gadarhar Pandit as his disciple and gave him mantra initiation. But as I said, Gadarhar Pandit was giving initiation to other people and the people, some people, did not have good faith. And in course of time, his heart became polluted by giving the mantra to unqualified persons and he was not getting realization from his mantra anymore. So he was asking Lord Chaitanya, please give me the mantra again. Lord Chaitanya said, no, you have to get from your Diksha Guru. Diksha Guru is one person. And so then after some time, Pundarik Vijanidi came there to Jagannath Puri. And at that time, Pundarik Vijanidi gave Gadarhar Pandit re-initiation. He re-initiated him, taught him the mantra again. So this is the wonderful pastime of uh, Gadarhar Pandit. Some people will worship Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu along with Gadarhar and in this way they will come to worship Radha and Krishna. People like Narahari Sakur who was a great Vaishnava and great devotee of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he worshipped Gaur Gadarhar in this way and then worshipped Radha and Krishna. Other people are more inclined to Lord Nityananda and they worship Lord Chaitanya with Nityananda in a different, it's a different mood. It's more in the mood of the, the cowherd boys like Krishna and Balaram. So different moods for different people. But they all give us the absolute truth. They give us the opportunity to develop love of God. Are there any questions? Yes, Prabhu? Give the microphone. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much for wonderful pastime you explained. Maharaj, about this Gadadhar Pandit, uh, Gadadhar Pandit, as in the first Leela also when he, Gadadhar Pandit was going with Mahaprabhu, on, like even not worrying about his Shetra Sanyas and Gopinath. So externally it looks like that he was, externally it looks like that he was not following like system or what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave him, some orders. But internally there must be something more like why he was going, even he, 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 he was not like a normal devotee who doesn't understand this. He must be understanding that going back with Lord Chaitanya, he is baking and he is leaving the service of Gopinath. So, why he was going behind Lord Chaitanya, even understanding that? Hare Krishna. Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Go back to Vrindaki. Hare Krishna.